there's a moment and then all of those uh, photo, photo sensitive light chemical processes have that moment where you transit uh, to the visible image, you know, where you've captured the image on the uh, chemically light, uh, the light sensitive paper and then you do something and, it's, and then it's visible. And so that instant of when the thing either comes up in the developer or you open the drum and see it, you know, that, that moment is, you know, the birth, the birth of the image moment, you're seeing it for the first time. Three, two, one, now. a lot of water coming down. Like, that was about 85 gallons. Gorgeous. The idea came to make a, a waterfall because water was the material that was most, have I've used most in my work. So uh, I figured out in my head how to do it and we set about trying to do it and ended up with, with this, which is not exactly what I had in my head. But it was the, the, the pattern of how the water moved was the one that was most exciting. The one in my head was not, I got close to it and it wasn't as, as uh, it didn't feel as vital. <clears throat> I think what, what, what's interesting in these, I mean, with the, these great waterfall images um, from Hokusai is the, um, the people who are watching, I find that so uh, compelling, is that the waterfall uh, becomes something that sort of people group around to, uh, to s you know, stop what they're doing and just um, have a moment with this uh, phenomenon. And you can see that in, um, in, in all of his waterfall images. And the water, the water is so fantastic because it becomes, uh, it becomes an abstract graphic. An image, this image of the curtain, uh, came up really as a, a sort of bookend to the first photographic image, or at least the first photographic image made in England which was a photograph of a window, Fox Talbot's um, The Window at Laycock Abbey. And I liked the idea of making an image that signified the closure of this phase of photography. I mean, I wasn't looking at his image thinking, oh, I have to, well, how do I respond to that? But the image of the curtain came up. I, I really actually don't know how. I think I was starting to feel a bit like a dinosaur in the, m the world that I'd, I knew and, and had inhabited uh, was, was ending, closing. Directly after I made the curtain image, uh, I, I spent some time looking at it. And, and generally I feel that I've, if I've made an image that I think is successful, it's because I have to keep looking at it to answer a question, or to, it's, it's not clear what, but there's a need to keep looking at the image. So when I studied the curtain image, when I looked at the curtain image, I saw a reference to the classical, but I didn't know what that meant. So I returned to these galleries. I used to be in these galleries a lot when I was photographing in the um, early 80s. With a, with a pinhole camera. So I, 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 I sort of had a taste of uh, classical sculpture from those times. I found this so interesting, this uh, pattern of the folds of the fabric on this sculpture, which I think is uh, sixth century BC of a uh, young woman. So in the period of uh, the Greek sculpture where, where the, the, the human form is really like a pillar, immobile, upright, 
erect. I would argue that that, that uh, symbolically um, that the pillar form comes out of the fabric form. What, what I find compelling about this is the depiction of the fabric. In some of the other sculptures that we saw, uh, the fabric is extremely ordered or uh, energetic in motion. And here you have the fabric uh, in, the, in the back of her um, garment is open and undone and falling in on itself and almost becoming abstracted, uh, chaotic. And because this is a grave marker, I understand that they use, the artists use the symbolism of the, of the chaotic fabric to uh, symbolize the child's death. The snake was always, for me, this idea of, uh, of, of life moving through time. So the snake then becomes a strand of DNA that uh, passed from distant time through multiple um, bodies. That, that snake image for me is that, that that energy, those genes moving down through time, across a landscape, across the surface of the earth. In this sculpture, which is a fragment of a, uh, a sculpture of Hygienia, to me the snake is just symbolic of energy, in the same way as uh, water moving has that symbolism, and frequently the you, you, see the, you see the mixing of those two forms of the motion of the snake depicted or the motion of water depicted and you, you have things uh, resembling each other. The snake I understand to be uh, really healing energy, healing force and it's what I would describe as the positive snake. How do you depict energy and how do you depict how do you depict force and energy when it's actually invisible? And the only way you can sh depict it uh, visually is through the channel of something else, a giant snake, uh, the motion of water, uh, uh, you know, waterfall down a mountainside, um, uh, the, the, the motion of fabric in, uh, in the wind or with the force of a body moving it. So it, it, they're all attempts to show what is un, un, unseeable, invisible. The only place we get to see the invisible is on the border where it transits with this world. And, and that, that, that membrane between the unknowable and the invisible and the known and visible uh, has, a, has, a, has a boundary. And in that, in that boundary, things start to get a little strange.